Hey guys, welcome back to Father and Son Investing. You know, it is no secret that Warren Buffett it will go down as one of the all-time great investors. Did you know that if you had invested $100 in his company, Berkshire Hathaway, in 1965, that would be worth more than $2 million today. However, if you had waited until 1972 when the share price had come down significantly and invested $1,000 at that time, it would be worth more than $62 million today. So in 2006, when Mr. Buffett had some scathing criticism of hedge funds and their exorbitant expenses, people took notice. In fact, he would go on to issue a challenge to hedge fund managers that over the course of 10 years, an index fund of his choosing would be able to beat the returns of multiple hedge funds. As Mr. Buffett said, it was the sound of silence until in 2007, a gentleman in the hedge fund industry named Ted Sadies took up the challenge and offered to make Mr. Buffett a bet. We're going to pick up the story from, from a Planet Money podcast where we will hear in Mr. Sadie's own words how this challenge went down. Now for someone from the other side of the bet, the humans can win, we can do better side of the bet. His name is Ted Sides. He's worked for years in the hedge fund world. He heard Warren Buffett's challenge and figured, yeah, I know some really smart people who can do better than average. I thought I had a rare chance uh, to catch somebody like Warren uh, potentially being the patsy at, at the poker table. I'm sorry, you said to catch him being what? The patsy at the poker table. This is the summer of 2007, and Sides sends Buffett a letter, like an actual letter in an envelope with a stamp, old school. He says he's interested in taking the other side of the bet. And so let's talk about what stakes you propose. And my typical stakes might be over dinner. Yours might be a little higher than mine, but uh, let's, let's see what happens. A little while after that, Sides gets this email and there's a PDF attached. He opens up the PDF and, and what's happened is Buffett has taken that letter and just scrawled some notes on it. And then somebody scans it in and sends it back to him. So they, they go back and forth for a while now. They start negotiating the bet. Safe to say he, he was comfortable with higher stakes than I was. <laughs> you're, you're, you're making a bet with one of the two or three <laughs> richest men in the world. Correct. They settled on that million-dollar bet. Buffett picked the Vanguard S&P 500 index fund. Sides and his partners picked a collection of hedge funds. The first year, 2008, was a terrible year for Warren Buffett, a terrible year for the index fund. As you probably remember, that was the year of the financial crisis. The stock market, the index fund, got hammered. Yeah, Buffett had terrible timing, right? Worst time to start this bet. By early 2009, things were looking really good for the hedge fund side, for Ted Seides. We were way ahead. Like what to what? The market would have been down about 45%, and the hedge funds were probably down about 25%. So if I'm imagining two runners on the track, like your runner is really kind of pulling ahead at this point. Um, it's safe to say our runner was hadn't moved much and the market runner had gone backwards. Now, just how far behind was Mr. Buffett? We can see here graphically that in 2008, he was way behind even the poorest performing of the hedge funds chosen by Mr. Sides. However, in 2009, he did manage to catch up to that poorest performing fund. It took him all the way out into 2012 to finally start beating the best performing of these hedge funds. Now that is despite the S&P 500 fund outperforming the hedge funds in every year after 2008. So one of the take home points that I get out of this is that when you're investing here, you need to be in it for the long haul. You can see that it took four years in order for Mr. Buffett to make up the deficit, but eventually in the long run, he would go on to win this bet. What did the final results look like? We can see that at the end of the 10 years, 2008 to 2017, the S&P 500 had returned almost 126%. Compare that to the other five funds where the best of the returns was about 88% and the worst of the returns was about 3%. Now, if one of the best investors on the planet thinks that the S&P 500 index is good enough to bet a million dollars on, then let's go ahead and look at this S&P 500 index and just see what it looks like for us, the average investor. 
In order to highlight this, I'm going to go ahead and turn to the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, VOO is the ticker symbol. We'll do that in honor of Jack Bogle, the founder of Vanguard, and really the person who started index fund investing. What I want to highlight here is the expense ratio, 0.03%. That's $3 per $10,000 invested. You could buy a cup of coffee for more than what you would be paying Vanguard to manage your money. You should know what you're getting into if you buy this particular ETF. The Vanguard folks break it down nicely. The thing that you should know is inf information technology is heavily weighted in here, 28%. And so that can be one of the risks of the S&P 500. If those information technology companies are suffering, this particular ETF is going to suffer as well. Now, Vanguard is not the only company out there that has an S&P 500 index ETF. Let's go ahead and look at some others. I'm going to go ahead and choose the iShares Core S&P 500 ETF. You can buy that at Fidelity. You can buy it at other brokerages as well, but I think Fidelity is a great place to have a brokerage account. It goes by the ticker symbol IVV, and I want to point out to you the expense ratio, 0.03%, so right in line with Vanguard's expense ratio. Now, not all of the S&P 500 ETFs out there are going to have that same very inexpensive expense ratio. In fact, we'll turn to the Spider S&P 500 ETF that goes by SPY and it's managed by State Street. The gross expense ratio here, 0.0945%. You might be thinking, well, that's not that much more. It's 950 per $10,000 invested. However, that is more than three times the expense ratio of Fidelity and Vanguard. And over the long haul, added expenses will just be eating away at your returns. I also want to go ahead and point out the share price here, $450 per share. Now, the Fidelity ETF was right on par with that. The Vanguard ETF is a little bit less. It's about $415 per share as of the time of this taping. However, there is a particular ETF out there that has a much lower share price and therefore might be good for a younger person or a newer investor that might not have $450 to spend per share. We'll go ahead and turn to another State Street ETF here. This one goes by the ticker symbol SPLG. It is the Spider Portfolio S&P 500 ETF. And what I want you to notice is that the share price is much less, $53 per share. That might make it much more palatable for someone to buy into an S&P 500 ETF. Now, I want to point out one of the risks of this ETF, and it has to do with the assets under management. That is far less than the other three ETFs that I've already mentioned. So if you need to sell SPLG, there might not be as many buyers for it as there would be with the other three ETFs. However, if you plan to keep this ETF for the long haul, 10 years, I don't think that's going to be quite as much of an issue. So in summary, the S&P 500 ETF is a great way to be invested in the market. You will be well diversified and the returns have been fantastic and really are kind of the benchmark. I hope this information was helpful for you. If it was, please give us a thumbs up and please, please, please hit that subscribe button and share this information with a young person in your life, particularly the SPLG ETF, which might be a way for them to buy in at a much lower share price. Until next time, Enjoy your investing.